All right, I'm not sure if you've already heard, but Midland just released a brand new handheld for their radios. Check it out. The Midland MX MC01. It's so dangerous, it's charming. All right, to all of you GMRS users, mainly those who run the Midland MXT575 or MXT275 in your rigs, Midland just released a brand new handheld upgrade to your radio. And the question is, should you upgrade? Spoiler alert, yes, you should. All right, that's it. That's the video. Go ahead and click away now. All right, over here is the OG handheld that comes with your Midland MXT575 or MXT275 GMRS radio. We like the MXT575 and 275 units from Midland because all the controls are in the handheld itself. That means that the unit is bare. There's nothing on it but just some plugs and you can hide it anywhere. And because of that, because Midland knows that everything is on here, they figured, well, what if we upgrade this thing? Make this even better because basically this is your radio. So enter the MX MC01. This thing is awesome. As of right now, this is not going to be the standard new handheld that's going to come with future MXT575 or 275 units. This is an upgrade to it. And today, we're going to tackle whether or not you should. Let's do a deeper dive. All right, so let's start with the external features. Now, as far as how they look, they pretty much look the same. The buttons are pretty much in the same kind of layout. However, this does feel a little bit different in my hands. And I'm not just saying that because it's the new new and I'm geeking out over here. No, this actually feels a lot better. The old version kind of thins out a little bit down here, which gets really weird because you kind of, you know, where do I hold this? Like, do I hold this here? And you end up having to hold it here like a glass of wine and it gets a little weird but this has a lot more girth to it and it's kind of even all the way through so it feels a lot more rugged in the hands like when you hold this you could totally tell the difference between trying to hold this and you're, you you kind of don't know where to place your fingers they also don't have grooves on this thing whereas this one does when i hold this my fingers kind of go over the speakers and i'm not doing this on purpose it's really that much thinner versus this my fingers don't go all the way around i'm not just holding it like this to prove a point it feels different it feels right now as far as the top they got away with all these buttons up here and just made it into one knob see the old way the power button was right here to turn the unit on. You would hold this down and it would turn on. And if you want to change your channels up and down, but I always forget which way is up, which way is down, like on these two. This used to be the volume button. So if you wanted to increase the volume, you would go up and down, which was really weird because I would go like this thinking I was choosing a channel and it was actually changing the volume. They moved the up and down channel selector to the front. This is a lot more intuitive because you choose your channels here and then to turn the volume up and down, then you turn the knob. So you turn the knob, you don't have to wait to press a button and hold it down. It just automatically turns on as soon as you turn the knob on. That's just so much easier than having these buttons up here. Here is the gripe that I do have about this one. The button layouts are pretty much the same. So you have your menu button on the upper right, 
followed by the call button and then the lock button and then the weather channel uh, button on the upper left and then your uh, monitor button and then your scan button. Before, all those buttons were separated. On the new one, they combined the bottom buttons together. So call with lock and then monitor with scan. But you know, when we use these radios, we're usually driving around or whatever, and we're holding this in our hand. And what I liked about it being separate is because this is a lot more tactile. You can kind of feel which buttons are what. Well, because they combine these buttons, that does make it a little bit tougher. And if you have bigger fingers than mine, then you might be trying to hit call button and you're accidentally pressing the lock button because they're kind of both together. And it's also a little bit more recessed than this. Like if you take a look, it kind of protrudes a lot more than this one does. This one has a lot more flatter profile, which looks good, looks awesome. But if you're driving around and you're just kind of using your fingers to touch things and trying to feel out what's what, that's what she said. This it gets a little bit harder than this where you can actually know where all the buttons are. And then on the side, there's your same kind of call button. The old one was a lot longer and the new one is much, much shorter. You don't know how many times I've accidentally pressed this button because it's so long and it's so thin and I'm holding it like this and I'm always accidentally pressing that bottom part of this. I'm not gonna be doing that so much with this anymore because it's right there. There's also no buttons on the side of this where this used to have something here for your earphones and for your um, for your microphones. If you are the kind that likes to have like a microphone, a lapel microphone or headphones tied to this thing, well, that's not going to be there on the new version. So just FYI, they simplified this more where you can't plug those type of things in. They probably figured a lot of people weren't using it. I've never needed it. I've never used this anyway. So this was just kind of wasted space for me anyway. But the biggest feature is the LCD screen. I mean, take a look at this LCD screen compared to this LCD screen. Like it's humongously bigger. This was hard to read. Like you'd see the channel, you'd see some information, but you kind of have to really look, especially if your eyesight's not so good and I'm getting older and I can't see as well as I used to, I would have to squint, especially if there's like a lot of sunlight and it's kind of blocking all that information. It's kind of hard to see. Well, now it's gonna be a lot better for you. I mean, just for reference, take a look at the screen. You are getting a ton more information on this thing than you will ever get from the small LCD screen that was on the original one. So for example, you have your channel indicator right there, tells you exactly what channel you're on in huge numbers without you having to squint. And then you have your uh, weather station indicator right there. Right below, you have your channel strength indicator. So it'll tell you exactly how strong your signal is, which is awesome and then right around that you have all the little bits of information that you might want to know that you couldn't get to on this one without you having to go to the menu so for example repeater channel is right there it tells you if you're on a repeater channel and then on the left side you have other pieces of information like Roger beep whether or not that's active and at the bottom you have RX or TX which will toggle between the two whether you're receiving or transmitting signal but I think my absolute favorite thing about this microphone is the new menu system. Like if you know anything about the original menu system, it was very difficult to navigate. You hit menu and you kind of scroll down and it just gives you two analog letters and I could never tell what those letters were by the way and I didn't know if I was on backlighting or if I was on volume or if I was on repeater channels but in the new one once you hit menu it just scrolls you through all the menu items and it's actually written out it makes it so much easier to customize and find what you're looking for without having to try to guess what those two little analog letters meant that is like worth its weight in gold. And I will buy this thing just for that reason alone. Now, as mentioned, this is compatible with the MXT575 and MXT275 GMRS radios. But if you have the MXT575 or 275, you can definitely upgrade to this. This comes in right around $90. Let's do some tests and see if it's actually worth it. All right, guys, got the OG handheld right here. We are gonna check the sound quality of this versus the new MX MC01. I am not putting any fancy microphones on this camera. We are just capturing ambient sound the way it is inside the Jeep. 
minus the off-roading rattles and squeaky squeaks and all that stuff. So let's get this thing turned on and go to the weather station and see how that's sounding. Mobile Coastal and Baldwin Coastal Counties. In Florida, Escambia Coastal, Santa Rosa Coastal and Okaloosa Coastal Counties. All right, now let's try the MXMC01. For tonight, southeast winds 5 to 10 knots. Waves 1 foot or less. A slight chance of showers. When? From Wednesday morning through Friday afternoon. Patchy fog. For Wednesday, southeast winds 5 to 10 knots. Impacts. Rip currents can sweep even the best swimmers away from shore into deeper water. Waves 1 foot or less. Patchy fog in the morning. Swim near a lifeguard. If caught in a rip current, relax and float. And for Wednesday night, southeast winds around 10 knots with gusts up to 20 knots. All right, back to the original one. We're going to go ahead and test out how loud both of these get. I'm going to kind of turn down the audio level here on the camera just so that we don't start peaking. All right, so here's the lowest setting on one. We're going to start to go up. That's the loudest. For tonight, level 9. East winds around 10 knots. All right, now we got the MXMC01 on here. This is the lowest audio setting. Let's see how loud this goes. 15 to 20 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Dominant wave every 5 seconds. A slight chance of showers late this morning and, and after the loudest. For tonight, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots with gusts up to 25 knots. Seas around 3 feet. Seas 3 to 4 feet. Dominant wave period 6 seconds. Dominant wave period 6 seconds. Patchy fog. Patchy fog after midnight. All right, up next, I'm going to test out how it sounds when you're talking on it. I'm going to use one of my handhelds, go into the garage and speak, and let's see how well that sounds. This is me using the original handheld, which is set to audio level 9. All right, this is me now using the MXMC01 handheld, also set to volume level 9. Check 1, 2, 3. Test 1, 2, 3. Test 1, 2, 3. Checking out the sound quality of the original MXT575 handheld set to volume 9. Checking to see if the transmission and the voice is a lot clearer with this one. I wanted to test out three things. Audio quality volume and reception clarity. All right, starting off with the audio quality, the MXMC01 is definitely much clearer than the original version that comes with the kit. I don't know how much of that gets transferred over to video and how much of that you can hear, but in person, you can definitely tell that there is a difference. I was using the Sony ZV-E10 with no special microphones. I didn't put any kind of audio filters on it. I just captured it using the preamp that's on the camera, so I don't know if it can pick up really the little nuances that make the MXMC01 just that much clearer. Now, as far as volume, honestly, I really couldn't tell the difference between the two. They were both just as loud. I cranked both of them up all the way to the highest it can go, which was level nine, and they were both just as loud as the other. To be fair though, Midland has never boasted that the new handheld is gonna be louder than the original one. That actually came from some other YouTubers who were reviewing the new handheld and saying that it was louder, but I think it just seemed louder to them because of the noise canceling feature, which I'll talk about in just a bit. But as far as volume, I mean, they were both just as loud. If it's not loud enough for you, you can also turn on the unit and make that speaker work as well and have both speakers going and you'll probably get louder sound. But just from the handheld itself, they no difference at all to me. Now, as far as reception clarity, there, there was a big jump and you could probably hear it in the audio that I'm putting out on here because it's very very noticeable I was using the handheld inside the garage and then transmitting into the Jeep and after I listened back to it the clarity on the MXMC01 was just leagues better and that's because of the noise canceling feature that I already brought up 
it cancels out any kind of ambient noise from where I was transmitting and it was just coming through really, really clear. Now, if you go back and kind of listen to how I put them back to back to back, I'm sure you could tell that the old version was just a little bit more tinny, like there was a lot more higher frequencies on the old one than the new one. There wasn't enough bass and that tinginess just made it harder to hear certain words. But in the new version with the noise canceling and it being just slightly deeper, I can hear the words a lot clearer. So that is definitely a plus because when I'm on the trail and I'm talking to everyone else in the convoy and they're also in a vehicle that's loud and rattling and everything like that, having something that will noise cancel their background and transmit to me in a much clearer voice. You don't know how many times someone has made instructions over the radio and I couldn't tell what they were saying. So I think that this is gonna help a lot. Now, I know that a lot of you audio nerds out there and I am not one, like audio is my Achilles heel. I am not the best at it. You might say to me, all right, well, why don't you just record both of these in a controlled environment with a better microphone? Then we can really see what the differences are. Yeah, if you wanna audio peep this thing, by all means, go ahead. But I wanted to record it in the Jeep, in the natural habitat that it's going to be because that's where we're gonna be listening to this thing. When you're out on the trail and you're out and talking to people, it's not gonna be a soundproof environment. That's just not reality. Like we, you're not gonna really pick up on those little nuances and you're not gonna care when you're driving around and you're talking to people. You just wanna be able to hear them clearly, be able to understand them and also have kind of a menu where you can see things a lot clearer and that is what this thing provides. So the question which I posed in the very beginning of this video is should you upgrade? Well, that's entirely up to you. If you have the budget for it, I think it's an awesome upgrade. If you have bad eyesight, this is an awesome upgrade. If you have a harder time being able to pick up what people are saying, and I have that a ton because I have allergies and my sinuses get clogged up and my ears, I can't really hear as well. The clarity on this, the larger screen, and the fact that it will noise cancel things out, it's all a plus to me. 90 bucks, it's really gonna be up to you whether or not that's worth it. I mean, personally, I would buy this. I think it's a great upgrade to the MXT 275 and 575 radios. If you have one, I think this will really, really serve you well. If you do wanna buy this microphone, it is available on their website already, as well as the MXT 575 and MXT 275 if you don't have those radios already either. Links are in the description below. They are affiliate links. So if you click on those and buy it through my links, then that does help out the channel a little bit. So yeah, just something to consider. And now that's the end of the video. I did just want to say a quick thank you to Midland for allowing me to test this new microphone. Man, I'm, I geeked out so much, man. Like they hit me up and said, hey, we got this new mic coming out. You want to try it and compare it to the old one? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And not only did they send the mic, they also sent a 575 unit for me to put in the Jeep and replace the 275 unit I have on there. So now both the Jeep and the 4Runner is running the MXT 575. I'm going to do a video on the range now that we both have the same radio. I want to redo that range test and see how much further of a range we're going to get now that we both have these really, really powerful radios in both our vehicles. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel and allowing me to test stuff for you. Hopefully we can do more of this type of stuff in the future. If you guys like this video, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Samson, and I will see you next time.